post them in the chat and we'll get a chance to come back to them at the end. Um, um, so yeah, so for anyone who has just joined us, please do introduce yourself, your name, your organization and where you are in the world in the chat. Um, so today you're going to hear from a couple of members of the Microsoft team, uh, from some of the ChangeX team and then from some social innovators who are dotted around the US and the world to tell you a little bit more about the ideas that are in this fund. So the fund we're launching today is a $75,000 fund that's available to communities across the Des Moines area and we'll tell you all about how it works. So I might just first of all hand over to Holly who's going to introduce herself and some of the work that Microsoft and the DCCD team does globally. Great. And I don't see slides. Are they up? Yeah, yeah Katie, do you want to? Can you see them now? Yeah. Yep. Let me... OK, cool. All right. Hey everyone, good morning. My name is Holly Beal. I think most of you know me by in Des Moines because I am the Des Moines community lead for the data center community development team. I also lead the community environmental sustainability program for Microsoft's data center community development team and I'll go into what that is in just a moment. If Katie you want to go to the next slide we have an overview of what the data center community development team is. So I think most of you may have heard this spiel by now but it really talks about how our team and our work is rooted in the Microsoft mission and our commitment to corporate social responsibility and how as a, a company, we work to apply the power of technology to empower people and strengthen communities and protect our planet. And our business practices and policies really reflect our commitment to making a positive impact around the globe. And so this focus is that's committed on CSR also really focuses on the communities where we operate data centers. So we know that in, in Des Moines, we have a data center presence. And so we have uh, a commitment to, to your area to giving back and really understanding what your priorities are and how we can contribute positively. So this is really just part of our goal to build and operate world-class data centers to deliver the Microsoft Cloud. We know that community development is part of that work. We can't have a successful cloud presence in a community unless we also have a positive presence in, in, in the communities where we operate. So that's kind of an overview of what my team does. Now we have these uh, three pillars and five initiatives. Um, I'll talk about the initiatives first. So we have the Empowerment Fund that you may be familiar with because this is the providing funding to organizations in our data center communities to support projects to deliver social, environmental, and economic development benefits. Um, so this is really through co increasing collaboration uh, among the contributors and award recipients. So we try to work with the community to develop these ecosystems of local organizations working together, which is pretty easy in Des Moines because everyone is so collaborative that trying to have this mission of this ecosystem of organizations <laughs> supporting each other is is um, pretty easy to do in Des Moines because you're all so, so uh, locally attuned to be doing that to do that anyway and so open to that. Then we have a workforce development program as well. So that's aiming to help our community members find employment in the mostly in the growing information technology field. So our mission there is really develop a strong pipeline of these skilled and diverse and local talent to staff both our data center operations team plus just the overall cloud computing and overall tech workforce and also make sure that our existing employees have opportunities for career growth as part of that mission. We have a broadband initiative so that's partnering with local groups to build and deliver affordable broadband to our data center communities. Um, we have the environmental sustainability program, which I manage as well. So that's identifying local environmental issues and building local partnerships to support those local groups for long-term protection of environmental health and we have a digital skills and transformation program to empower schools and nonprofits and small and medium sized businesses to enhance their teaching and learning and application of digital skills and acceleration of this digital transformation and we try to have all all five of these programs rooted in diverse workers 
but um, for all of these initiatives, and then also employee engagement as a piece of that. So I hope that makes sense with all of our different initiatives. And then here's a, just a snapshot for um, this, this year, how, how much we've contributed across the globe. So this is 18 communities overall. We each have, we have community leads for each of those. Again, I'm the lead for Des Moines. So it is my pleasure to be able to have just a piece of this, of, of this impact. And then I will pass over to Stephanie Westrom, who's local. I'm coming out of um, Seattle. Um, and I'll, also I'll pass it to Stephanie Westrom, who's a local Microsoft employee who is passionate about making a positive difference in Des Moines and can help us on our V team and help ushering, being kind of our, our ear on the ground for, for ushering in some of these um, initiatives locally. So I'll pass it over to you, Stephanie. Thank you, Holly, and good morning and good afternoon. Um, wherever you are in the world today, I really appreciate the opportunity to come and, and speak to um, my fellow local uh, leaders in our community that are looking to make impact um, and are passionate just like I am about uh, about our community. So unfortunately, my camera broke on my laptop yesterday, so I can't be on video, but I do love seeing all of your lovely faces and hope that as um, we continue to power through this pandemic, that at some point, some of the folks in this call will be able to meet you in person. As Holly mentioned, my name is Stephanie Westrom, and I am a Microsoft employee housing out of our new corporate office in downtown Des Moines off of Grand Avenue. Um, I've been with Microsoft for about five years now, and I've been working um, in the or living in the Des Moines area for five years as well. I am a native Iowan. I grew up in Iowa City, Iowa. After leaving for college, um, I lived all over the United States and major cities and uh, the collaboration, just the unity that we have here um, in town. A couple of things I wanted to share with you about Microsoft and our employees and how we've come together um, as really uh, an employee community and giving back to our local um, team. We've done a lot of events with um, the uh, food bank, local food banks. Um, I'm a part of a uh, organization called Digi Girls where we're promoting um, STEM events in partnership with the Science Center in downtown Des Moines. And also there's one month out of the year which we just exited, uh, which is October in our give month and where employees come together um, and are contributing volunteer hours as well as donations which are matched by Microsoft. Um, 100% up to $15,000 uh, where we are giving back to our local community. So this is super exciting for me to see that we are launching the um, community challenge here in Des Moines and we have a fantastic opportunity to take advantage of the funds that Microsoft is offering through this challenge where we're expanding beyond the employee base and asking our community members to come together um, in these events and um, and taking advantage of the, the funding that we're offering to really make an impact. I know myself personally, um, and we're going to get, we'll go into the, um, a challenge a little bit later here, but I've already communicated and rallied um, my immediate family members. We're looking forward to going up to um, Story County um, and helping uh, with tree planting um, as some of the impacts in that area were heavily affected by derecho. So we're um, going to um, be uh, taking, hopefully nominating for some funding there to go and do some tree planting. So that's a little bit about me. Microsoft is our impact. Again, I'm local here. Um, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my contact information in the chat window and, and happy to talk more about how we can partner together and making impact in our community. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Um, very exciting to hear all the stuff that's already happening in Des Moines. And I think there's definitely some overlap with some of the ideas that are going to be in the fund with some of the work that you're already doing. And also thank you, Holly, um, for your great introduction. And we've had the pleasure of working with Holly and her team now for over 18 months. And uh, we're, yeah, just so delighted to be a part of this global impact that, that you guys are having. So I'm now going to hand you over to Paul O'Hara, who is the CEO of ChangeX. So he's going to share a little bit more about what ChangeX is and also a little bit more about how the Des Moines Community Challenge um, is going to work and what it, 
the, a little overview of it before we go a little bit deeper on, on how it all works. Great, thanks a million, Neve. Um, good morning uh, to everyone in Des Moines. It's kind of uh, getting evening here. It's starting to get dark outside, but um, delighted to be uh, joining this launch. And yeah, so as Neve said, I just want to do a little bit of um, an introduction to ChangeX and and uh, and to the challenge um, for the Des Moines community. So just a little bit of background. Uh, Neve and I uh, created ChangeX with the uh, we have been investing in social entrepreneurs and recognize that there was all these great ideas bubbling up from communities all over the world and uh, we thought it was wasteful that those ideas weren't easily accessible to other communities um, who might uh, like to adopt them and adapt them if they thought they were relevant to their own context so the idea behind ChangeX was could we put all of the great ideas that we could identify, uh, social and environmental innovations, and make them widely accessible through a technology platform. So how ChangeX works, it's a platform connecting communities to social in innovations and funding. Uh, so we curate and package replicable innovations. So urban tree planting, for example. Uh, funding partners fuel local community teams to activate those ideas. Um, so. Microsoft uh, in this instance and then local teams activate the ideas with finance so that could be a team of uh, of school kids of teachers of retirees of friends uh, whatever it might be that come together to get one or other of these projects up and running and then we measure and share the impact outcomes so jumping on a slide there Katie so this is um you can see on the map here on the top right hand corner, um, we have uh, been able to work with Microsoft now in several communities uh, uh, and states and cities across the United States. So um, we're very excited to be adding uh, Des Moines to our map uh, uh, today. So through these Microsoft community challenges, we've in the past um, 18 months or so launched 118 new projects. Uh, directly impacting a little over 6,000 people. So roughly speaking, every project impacts on average 60 people directly. And you can just see some photos here from across the US of, uh, of various uh, teams activating their projects and communities. Um, so we've seen um, really great uh, engagement from the communities that we've launched in so far and we're uh, very hopeful that uh, that we'll see likewise in Des Moines. So just jumping on another slide, I can take you through um, how, how the challenge uh, will work for Des Moines. So launching today, there's a $75,000 fund, uh, all sponsored by Microsoft. The, the grant sizes related to this are between $500 and $5,000, and that just depends on the idea and you know we kind of ha allocate an amount depending on what resources are typically needed to get that idea up and running. Um, the region is the Des Moines metro area and that covers several counties so on the on the fund landing page and we can share a link to that um, in a minute on that landing page you can see which counties this covers. The goal is to activate up to 35 uh, new projects selecting from across 12 proven ideas and the themes cover sustainability, digital skills and prosperous communities being three of uh, of my priorities, but also um, this is, you know, these are areas of focus that that Microsoft have determined from talking to communities uh, right across the US. So that's a little bit uh, of how it works. And uh, yeah, just um, Thanks so much to Microsoft for the partnership and uh, and thanks to all of you from Des Moines for joining this morning and wish you all well with the challenge. Back to you, Neve. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, so Katie Smith now is going to go into a bit more detail on how exactly the fund works. Thank you, Neve. Um, so yeah, as Neve said, I'm going to just take you through um, a little bit more detail as to how the fund process actually works, and then we'll get on to the more exciting information about the idea 
start. Um, so as Paul said, we will shoot soon share a link to the Des Moines Community Challenge landing page with you. So you'll be the first to see it. Uh, we'll share it in the chat and we'll also share comms pack with the, the link in an email afterwards. So how does it work? Um, so you can select one idea from a portfolio of 12 ideas to start in your community and then you'll go through a 30 day challenge process. So this is just a number of simple steps that you need to complete in order to access your funding. So from our work with communities over the last four or five years, we found that if groups take a number of simple steps at the beginning within the first month, say they're much more likely to have a successful outcome for their project. So all you need to do is have a call with one of us on the ChangeX team. So that'll be myself or Neve or our colleague Nicole. Um, you need to form a team. So this is probably the most important step. So you need to get a team of five people together to help you out with your project. You need to have a meeting. Um, so just a casual meeting with your team. Of course, because of COVID at the moment, this can take place virtually. That's no problem. And then you need to um, develop an action plan and share that with us as, along with a photo of your meeting or a screenshot of your meeting if it was virtual and uh, upload that to your page. Uh, you'll then receive uh, the first installment of your funding. So as Paul mentioned, the fund sizes range from between 500 to $5,000 for each of the project, depending on what the, the cost of getting your particular project that you've chosen uh, set up is. So you'll receive one portion of the funding then and you'll go and, and get your project underway. And we'll then be back in touch with you in about six months time when you can share your impact with us. So this will be a short impact survey and photos of your project in action. And at that point we can release the remaining um, section of your funding. So who can apply? So Microsoft and ChangeX both want this to be as easy and accessible for, uh, for anyone to start in their community. So once you're in um, the Des Moines metro area, so there's a number of counties, I'll quickly list them out, but you can find them in the terms and conditions. So it's Polk, Dallas, Warren, Madison, Guthrie, Jasper and Story counties are all included in the fund. So if you're in one of those uh, counties and you're passionate about improving your community well-being, then this is for you. So you can be an individual or you can be um, a registered nonprofit or you can just be um, a more casual community group. If you're an individual, you need to build your team, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, but so it's really it's open to, to, to everyone and anyone like a, a school group, a community group, a neighborhood group, a place of worship, a community garden, whatever it might be. Um, so then what do you get? You receive the funding, as we mentioned before, you'll also get a starter pack. Um, so in the mail or just via PDF, whichever is your choice. And um, this will include a general guide to starting any project in your community and also a more specialized guide to starting the particular project that you've chosen. You'll also receive tech tools. So this is in the form of a web page. So uh, on the ChangeX site, you'll get your own web page where you can organize your events, you can share updates with your team and build your team out. And you'll also get support and mentorship both from the ChangeX team, but also from the social innovator team behind the idea that you've chosen to start. So if you have any questions at all, um, please put them in the chat and, and we'll answer them now. I can answer them from now on um, as Neve takes back over. So thanks very much and I'll hand back to Neve. Great. Sorry, I'm just on meeting. <laughs> so yeah, as Katie mentioned, so we have 12 different ideas that, that you can apply for funding for and then take them and get them started in your local community. And we have a number of the nonprofits behind these ideas on the call today. Um, and we're just gonna give a quick introduction to all of them. So I think Katie did allude to it as well, but just so that you know that all the ideas have been, we have some guidelines in place with regard to how you do these in the current within the current restrictions with covid so things can be done virtually there's kind of special guides for each of the ideas so that they can be done safely um, in communities at this time as people stay apart so the first one i'm going to go to is tracy q from grow remote Hello, thanks a million. Uh, so my name is Tracy. I'm co-founder of a social enterprise called Grow Remote. We help make uh, remote working local. So we focus in on employment that's available anywhere. 
um, we were just rehashing our, our story today to another group. Um, and one of the primary challenges that we found with remote work is that there's no business model to, to make that local. So we step in and we help people get access to uh, this form of employment through training, through supports. And then I suppose when people are employed that they have a way to, to get together locally for that local connection. Um, so we make public our kit for, for building local communities, which includes training for community leaders, training for people managers, training for people trying to find remote work. Um, and so far to date, uh, 130 local communities have taken that up across the world. So thanks to Microsoft uh, through the 30 day challenge and, and, and in setting this up here, um, we'll be here to support you in, in setting up um, a local community of remote workers to benefit um, the local area. To, to grow and thrive. And um, so we were built ourselves in, in rural Ireland in in uh, the burn on the border of Clare and Galway. And um, so we're really excited to see uh, how it grows here too. And just thanks to the team for enabling this to happen. It's very exciting. Brilliant. Thanks, Tracy. And next we'll go to Krista Nightingale from the Better Block Foundation. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much for letting us be a part of this and we're looking forward to working with some of you. Uh, so my name is Krista, I'm with The Better Block, which is an urban design nonprofit. We are based out of Dallas, Texas, and the project that we're uh, bringing forward is Slow Streets. Um, so throughout COVID, COVID, we have all seen that um, people are looking at the ways in which their streets move them. Um, what was traditionally always for the vehicle is now being looked at as a place that you could do some other things such as bicycling, scootering, walking, jogging. Um, so with the Slow Streets program, we would work with you to work with the city uh, to allow you to shut down your local street to through traffic, keeping it open to um, any local traffic and city services, things like that. And then with the funding, you would get all the materials that you need to actually make that happen including some stencils that you could put on the ground with the community, uh, the barricades that you would need, all of those things. Um, so basically, it's just allowing for people to get outside, to spread out, to maintain that safe social distancing, uh, but still have a chance to interact with neighbors in a safe way. So I'm here for any questions and look forward to working with you. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thanks, Krista. And yeah, what might be a good companion for slow streets is Cycling Without Age. So I might ask Pernilla Bisson to introduce Cycling Without Age. Yes, hello. Can you see me and hear me? I'm I'm outside. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can. Oh, and oh. we can see you. Yeah. Good. All right. OK, well, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity in Des Moines. Uh, I'm from Cycling Without Age and uh, we offer uh, rickshaw rides for people with limited mobility so that they get a chance to to be outside um, as many of us we really really need it and it's good for our health and it's good for the community uh, we have about 415 chapters we call them already in the united states and uh, uh, we really want to you know expand that so that all communities they have one of these uh, rickshaws and the people that are riding with the with the passengers they can be anyone even you know older adults it can be family members just any volunteer or even you know staff at a care home for instance that want to go out for a ride it's a very simple idea and we have some guiding principles slowness generosity without a storytelling and relationships so even though we really really believe that bikes have an opportunity to transform the world to a better place and a more generous place None of our guiding principles are actually about cycling. It's about all of the magical things that happen when you go out on a ride like that. So uh, I couldn't really, um, because I'm outside and all of that, check out cyclingwithoutage.org and uh, please stay in touch and good luck to all of these wonderful uh, nonprofits. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much. And um, so now, next we're going to hear from Camille Schroeder, from, who's the local representative there in Des Moines for First Lego Leak. Hi everyone, we're excited to be a part of this effort to inspire and engage the community with you and so appreciate the support of Iowa First Lego League programming. Um, First Lego League introduces young children ages 4 to 14 with, to STEM and hands-on learning. 
And the participants will be gaining real world problem solving through guided global robotics program and helping to really figure out how to build a better future together. So within first Lego league programming, there are three different divisions or programs. And so students will be using critical thinking, coding and design to do robotics at a really early age in, in the form of teamwork and working together through innovation. So with Discover, the kids are four to six years old and they use Lego Duplo and they really learn hands-on in the classroom or at home. With Explore, the students are ages six to 10 and they focus on the fundamentals of engineering as they explore those real world problems. They learn to design and code and then they create unique solutions made with Lego bricks and also with the Lego Education We Do 2.0 kit. And with the challenge teams, um, this is just friendly competition as teams of students ages nine to 14 will engage in research, problem solving, coding and engineering. They will design, test and program a Lego robot that navigates missions on a robot game, as well as present their research um, to their community and, and share that at competitive events. So, this gives kids a real opportunity in a really cool way to come together and it involves all skill levels. And so it's a great way for not only adults to get involved with this, but also students and they can gain confidence and support in this inclusive environment. This year's challenge theme is really great and unique because it's staying fresh and fun um, with the real world problem of getting teams to focus on how they get people moving and active in their communities. And so we're really hoping that teams will research and share their innovations and inspiration for getting Des Moines out and moving and helping have everyone have an active future. So thanks so much for this. And we're really looking forward to working with you all. Brilliant, thanks so much Camille, that was great. And another little bit of overlap there, I think maybe with, with this year's theme and some of the other ideas. So I'm going to hand over now to my two wonderful colleagues, Katie and Nicole, who are just going to run through very quickly the remaining ideas. So Nicole, do you want to kick us off? Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, so the first project that I'm going to introduce is Open Orchard. Open Orchard is a project where it gives opportunity to local residents to plant fruit trees in public spaces in their community. So it's able to provide free fruit and also add greenery to the environment. The next idea would be community fridge. So a community fridge is where individuals and businesses share food with their community, to help those in need, as well as fight uh, food waste. Um, they can be placed in public spaces like schools, community centers, and businesses. And because of the pandemic, we've actually seen a demand for community fridges across the US with the outages in food banks and food pantries. And lastly, River Cleanup, which we partnered with American Rivers, which is a national organization, is a community initiative to aim to clean and maintain rivers across the US. Now I'm gonna pass it off to Katie. You're muted, Katie. Sorry, having difficulty unmuting while still sharing. OK. Sharing. Can you, oh, yeah. Can you hear me and see the slide? Yeah, we yes. can hear you and see. Yeah. OK, take two. Oh. OK, um, so Hour of Code is a nationwide initiative started by Computer Science Education Week and Code.org which introduces millions of students to a one hour of computer science and programming. So this can be started in a community setting, in a school setting, um, and it's just, yeah, a really introductory level um, for, for kids to, to, to get a first glimpse of coding and what it's all about. Uh, Girls Who Code um, are an international nonprofit, nonprofit who are leading the movement to close the gender gap in technology. So uh, through this challenge, you can start a Girls Who Code club in person or virtually and use the Girls Who Code uh, free curriculum and their lesson plans to inspire and educate and equip young women with computing skills. 
Pollinator Partnership and Bee Friendly Farming both come from a nonprofit called Pollinator Partnership who are based in California and they're both about uh, protecting and supporting native pollinators. So Bee Friendly Farming is in a, a farm setting so this can be a small urban farm or a large rural farm and it's about um, getting to a point where between three and six percent of your land is farmed in a pollinator friendly way and then getting um, recognition for that in your community with your produce. And Pollinator Partnership is the same idea, but on a, on a smaller community setting. So in a school or in a, in a, in a, in a uh, community park or community area, it's creating a pollinator friendly habitat. And then lastly, and our newest idea on the platform actually is community composting. So this is when community members come together to compost together. So to divert food waste and organic waste from landfill. Um, and thereby reducing methane production um, and leading, uh, creating compost, which can help uh, local farms um, with a higher yield of crops. And um, so this is particularly for areas where there isn't um, a composting infrastructure in place already, but communities can come together um, to kind of have weight in numbers and, and get it started in there. So I think that is all of them. Yeah, uh, we'll hand back to Neve now. Brilliant, thanks Katie. So yeah, that was a lot of information uh, for everyone and I'm seeing some chat, some questions and, and comments in the chat so that we'll now get a chance to hear from some more people and particularly some local people there in Des Moines. So I think Katie, you can stop sharing now if it might, so that we might be able to see some more faces. Um, so yeah, so I know we have people here from lots of different local nonprofits and organizations and many of you have lots of connections there in the local community and people who might be interested in these ideas. So yeah, just have a think about who those people might be and maybe nominating or sharing some of these ideas with them. And we'll get to that, the kind of sharing of this a little bit later. So I just want to start digging into some of the questions here. So the first question I think I saw was, can one of the ideas that it's not in the 12. Can someone start an idea that's not one of these 12? So I might put that to you, Katie, if that's OK. Sure, yeah. Um, so at the moment, um, it has to be one of these 12 ideas. So there is an option, however, to adapt the idea so it can best suit your community. Um, if there's you know, particular elements of your community that you, you need to change the idea slightly, that's fine. But it does need to be based on one of these 12 at the moment. And so we found that these these ideas work really well in, across a number of community settings. They've been proven to work and have a really great impact um, in, in other communities. So we hope they will do in, in Des Moines as well. Brilliant, thank you. And then I think we had Laurie who was maybe looking to do a little bit of um, tracing of ancestors in Galway, but I'm not sure if Tracy <laughs> is still with us, but I'm sure that she'd be delighted to help you um, if she could. And then we had a couple of questions about the Slow Streets initiative, which I know that Krista has probably answered, but Krista, do you want to just share a little bit more information about how Slow Streets might work there in Des Moines? Yeah, so one question was, um, are these temporary? Uh, what we've seen with this initiative is that it is temporary. Usually cities will grant kind of 30 day permits have gone on for a bit longer as COVID has continued on. Um, and then one thing that we've also been working on is measuring impact. And um, so a lot of communities, once they've done a slow streets, they want this to be more permanent. Um, you can't permanently, usually, you can't permanently shut down your street to through traffic, but there are some other ways that you can address speed in your neighborhood. And so by doing an impact guide, we're able to pass that along to City Hall and kind of show them what the neighborhood is looking for. And then that could lead to a little more permanent change. Um, we have one of those impact guides on our website and um, I could share it with you all as well and we could put it on the page maybe, uh, but it's at Dallas, uh, betterblock.org backslash Dallas Slow Streets. Um, and I've shared that in the chat as well. And then there was a question about adapting it for snow and for cold weather. Uh, we do have ideas for that. We have not been able to do that yet. Uh, so we would love to work with you all to kind of think of some ways to adapt the slow streets to be uh, weather friendly and still allow for that chance to get outside. So uh, happy to collaborate, brainstorm and come up with some really fun stuff on that end. And I think that was all the questions, but if I missed anything, let me know. 
Great, thank you, Krista. And then, yeah, we have some people, Tim, who has lots of experience with Hour of Code, so thank you for sharing your contact details there, Tim, for anyone who wants to, who's interested in starting Hour of Code. And then we had some great nominations from Sam, um, that, so Community Fridge, yeah, that sounds like an organization that might be relevant for, for starting Community Fridge. And yeah, lots of people sharing um, their contact details for people who want to get in touch. So I might open it up to the floor now if anyone wants to um, unmute themselves and maybe ask a question or share their thoughts or some of those ideas and nominations that people are mentioning in the chat. Don't be shy, it's okay. <laughs> Neve, what would you say so, is the best way of of sharing, spreading the word about these ideas? Yeah, so we're actually going to share a communications pack um, just after this call. So we'd love for you to share it with your networks through social media, through newsletters. Um, and we try to make it as easy as possible for you to do that. So I think, Katie, you have already shared the link to the landing page, but we'll send around a communications pack um, straight after this that, that people can go ahead and, and share. I see we have a couple more questions there. So who can I reach out to for the Girls Who Code? So yeah, we can share those details with you. Actually, Nicole, would you mind sharing Cabret's contact details? So Cabret was hoping to be with us today, but then was on another conference and she's the community, the national community manager for Girls Who Code. And if there is a local representative in Des Moines, I'm sure that she can also put you in touch with them. Um, and then a question from Sanjita about the ideas. So yeah, I think if we just reshare the link to the fund landing page that you, you'll be able to browse through the ideas there. Sanjita and then a question from Lynn who can I reach out to for Community Fridge. So if you go on to the Community Fridge page on ChangeX once you click on there and um, there'll be some contact details there for the Community Fridge network. They're called Hubbub in the UK so they actually manage a global network of Community Fridges and Kana is the community lead there and we can share her email address with you also but hopefully you'll be able to find the information that you need um, on the page nice Krista so I'm going to be in touch with you about um, permanent solutions for uh, for reducing speeds of traffic much needed and yeah, great question from Justin there. If there were contacts that have run some of these ideas that could offer suggestions or feedback. So we've had people like take these ideas and run them now all over different cities in the US. And some of them have scaled right across the world. And so we can definitely put you in touch with people who have started them. So once you register interest in a particular idea on ChangeX, then we'll connect you with someone who has done it before. Or if there's a particular idea or two that you're interested in, Justin, just let us know and we can connect you with someone um, who has done it successfully elsewhere. And we did try to tailor the portfolio of projects to be what was most relevant for Des Moines. So they're not going to be exactly the same. We don't just put out this exact same portfolio in all of our locations, but um, uh, several of them do overlap. So. And and even if it wasn't started by a Microsoft um, initiative, I think we'll be able to connect you with folks that have led those projects in other locations. Yeah, sure. And yeah, thanks for that suggestion, Matt. The Urban Ambassador sounds like an excellent network to potentially distribute this through. So we'll definitely try and get in touch with them. And yeah, seeing lots of Irish uh, heritage here in Des Moines, so good to know that we're all connected, even though we're quite far away. Are we able to make any comments? Yeah, of course. Yeah, please do. Oh, 
I just wanted to thank you for um, this and um, just wanted to put a plug for a couple of things. One, the uh, Lego League is awesome. Um, I was the one who continued to ask for that, Holly, um, in multiple uh, meetings before uh, when we did community um, feedback sessions, I guess. One thing I'm missing seeing um, in my community, I belong to like Indian Nepalese culture here and our community members have three FLL teams in their basement, somebody's house every year, and it's really hard to find funding. So I appreciate that. I would be happy to share that information to everybody. Um, one one thing that I'm seeing uh, uh, missing is my older son, 16 year old. He's in the first tech challenge and high schools, robotics teams in high schools are severely, severely, severely underfunded. Just one thing to think about. They do amazing job. We always wonder why there are 15 kids in the football field and five people pulling hair to do the robotics team. Uh, we're trying very much to bring other parents and kids involved um, because of my son. We included two of his other friends to do this with them. He's actually creating an app with three other friends that um, to to um, do baseball um, tracking the. Uh, not being able to say it any uh, well, but I think how can we foster those entrepreneurship for these kids who are doing above and beyond um, like entrepreneurship? They're launching their business. They're, they're four kids, high schoolers, literally spending all day, all summer working together, uh, creating an app and they're like trying to do it. I'm just giving an example because I live this every day. I'm sure I'm not alone. There's multiple, many other you know, kids like that um, mentorship, like who can how can we get mentors for them um, to help them with that app to to get them to that next level and maybe funding seed funding available. So sorry, thank you. Brilliant, thanks Sanjita and great to hear that there's already some uh, first Lego League teams active there in Des Moines. So we actually have Christy Scarpone from first Lego League headquarters. Um, Christy, would you have any thoughts on Sanjita's question there? Maybe you're muted. Oh, she's a... there you are, I think. I wonder, can I unmute you? While she's getting unmuted too, I, I can also mention that um, we funded some other programs in Des Moines that have to do with some older students. So I can share this newsletter and the one before that that goes through um, different organizations we supported like, te like Tech Camp 2020 with Tech Journey. Um, and we, we have some other organizations that we've supported for outside of this ChangeX um, initiative so because this change x initiative is more like the grassroots component to it but I, yeah i'm happy to share some of the other efforts as well like with um, by degrees foundation and dresser success Great. i'm off of mute it's christy <laughs> i too am a first tech challenge parent mentor too so I, I i i hear the passion so um i'll put my contact information in the chat for if anybody who wants to again first lego league is one of um, our progression of programs that we run worldwide um need i know that the first lego league one was the one that resonated most with this round of uh, of change x um community challenges, but there's certainly opportunity to um, support the older kids as well. And I'll put my contact information here. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Christy. And maybe one one, one thing, if I could just quickly mm -hmm. add, Neve, is, um, you know, what uh, one thing that we have kind of discovered through this process is that the you know, there's there's an awful lot of communities that don't have access to these types of social innovations or indeed to the financing to get them going. So um, anybody on the call from Des Moines who can help get the word out to those harder to reach communities, um, uh, we would really appreciate it, you know, just to make sure that those that don't typically get these opportunities um, at least uh, know that the opportunity is there for them to to take one of these ideas and run with it in their own community. So quick shout out for that. Yeah, I think we've particularly seen that with some of these education initiatives because, you know, there, there are first level league teams active all across the country. There's hours of code happening 
coming up now in December, there'll be thousands of them across the country. Uh, but this funding allows schools who maybe wouldn't otherwise have access to these kind of programs um, to do that. So yeah, spreading the word into those schools as much as possible. So uh, Sam Gabriel has a hand up if you'd like to jump in. Hello, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Yeah. I, I am uh, I came a little late because I was in another meeting. So, but I'm I'm interested in the the Lego League um, initiative. But this is like the the community that we serve the the immigrant community is uh, with emphasis on the African community. You know, we don't know what Lego League is. You know, I I you know personally never use it and I, I kind of get a sense of it but how do we even communicate that to the youth and say hey this is a project that's available and I, you know are you guys interested in it when they don't even know what it is so i think we would need a little bit of push if this is something that we want to do um a little bit of push to support maybe having someone to speak to our youth about these different um, um opportunities and and you know with the with the uh, virtual meetings that's going on, I think that would help us to uh, to have someone directly co communicate with our youth. We, we meet with them five days a week, so this is something I, I, I'm very interested in. You know, the kids taking part in this. Um, recently, we had we heard of the action the action uh, youth action squad that was led by the group here, and we just had that person come in virtually and talk about that program, and then we had some interest. Out of it, so I think if we we're very interested as far as our organization to have our kids take part in it, but how do we have someone who are well knowledgeable about these different initiatives to present it to our to our youth? Brilliant, thanks, Sam. I'm delighted to hear that you're interested. So, Camille, who's the local representative there for First Lego League, has said that that she would love to come speak to your group. And um, so. Yeah, that sounds like so. Uh, I think you two should be able to connect directly if you want to maybe share your contact details, Camille, and then Sam can get in touch and arrange to to go and speak to your group. What's and what's the name? What's what's the name of the person again? That's Camille. Do you want to jump in there? Sure. Hi, Sam. I'm Camille Schroeder. I'm located at Iowa State University in the College of Engineering and oversee First Lego League for the state of Iowa. And I'd be happy to talk to your group and share more information and help you along and and just answer any questions that you have. So I've put my email in the chat and right. please reach out and connect. We'd love to engage with you. All right. Thank you so much. Brilliant. OK, thank you both. So yeah, so I think we're almost getting to the end of today. So in terms of next steps, um, our ask of you all here is to help us to spread the word. Um, you've all been so kind with sharing nominations and suggestions for who we should get in touch with. So we will share with you a communications pack that you can pull content from, share it with anyone that you think will be interested in these ideas. So Holly will do a follow up after this. And you'll actually, you should actually be able to get the contact details of other people who are on the call as well from that email, because it sounds like there's lots of connections to be made um, from the, the different people that were on this call. And um, so Holly, I might hand over to you for, for kind of some closing words from as the Des Moines community lead for Microsoft. Sure. Yeah, thanks so much for all this engagement. And I, I told you at the beginning of the call, Des Moines, you would love <laughs> to all work together. I love seeing all of the, the connections happening, even um, just within the those of you on the call. So it's really incredible to see. Um, and that's pretty, pretty special. Uh, we've been on lots of these calls and I don't want to be partial to Des Moines, but you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we will. I will send out the recording of this call. It also has a transcript for anyone um, with any hearing impairments or just want to read through it. Um, and we'll also share the slides. Um, so I'll I'll follow up with those. And then as of uh, now, the the uh, the challenge is open. So you can go on the website. Um, we'll, it's posted in the chat a few times, but then also, of course, share it in the email. And you can share this far and wide. It's going to be open. There's no time 
line for this. It's just until the funds run out. So please um, go ahead and share and start uh, start applying um, for these projects and let us know if you have questions. But yeah, pretty excited. We're launching this in Des Moines and we'll have um, our local V team there with Microsoft employees to help share it on as well. So we put a um, in the chat, but maybe I'll, I'll share it in the email as well, a suggested social media post if you want to share it, um, share this opportunity to your social media network. Um, and yeah, anything else, Neve, that I should share? I'll share the recording, the slides, social media post. Um, the, yeah, and then obviously the, the website. The comms pack. Yeah, the everything comms should pack. be in there. Yeah. And our the ChangeX team's contact details will be in there as well. So if you have any questions or if you want us to connect you with anyone, and um, just get in touch with myself, Katie, or Nicole, and we'd be very happy to make those connections for you. So yeah, thank you so much, everyone, um, to Holly and Stephanie from Microsoft, and also Rahul from the Microsoft team, and also to all the great social innovators who joined us to share about their ideas. And thank you so much to all the local community in Des Moines. As Holly said, I think you were probably one of the most enthusiastic and engaged communities um, that we've worked with. And there's there's been that setting a very high standard. Um, so, and thanks also to Paul, Katie and Nicole from the ChangeX team sharing lots of valuable information with us. So yeah, looking forward to working with you all Katie, Nicole and I will be here to support you as you share this with your networks or get started with some of these ideas. Great, thanks a million. And thanks to you as well, Neve, for all your work in pulling right. this together. No problem. Great stuff, Neve, and everyone. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, Before thanks day. everyone. Have a good yeah. rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.